Hi, welcome to my video on financial analysis. Now, be an active learner. As I take notes on the board, you do the same so that you can keep up and review the content. All right, we're gonna talk today about something called financial analysis. Financial analysis really is just how to measure how good is a company financially performing. Now, a lot of times we even make judgments about, uh, you know, I know so-and-so and they are, must be wealthy because they have things. Or I know so-and-so because they've just got a lot of cash always all the time. These aren't really good ways to understand someone's financial ability. Financial analysis is about weighing things. Um, if you just look at one side of a balance sheet, for example, and say, wow, the company has lots of assets and you stopped right there, that would not really be an analysis. That'd just be an observation. We see a lot of assets that a company has. Well, if you take those assets, things the company owns, and then you compare that to the debts they have, or you compare that to the equity they have built in the company, then you get a better analysis. And so it's not about observing. It's about analyzing, comparing things. So financial analysis helps us take some financial information and really judge in a real consistent manner how the company is doing or how the individual is doing. So don't just observe financial results, do analysis, which means we're going to compare items. Now to do that today, I'm going to borrow some financial. So here is an income statement and here is a balance sheet that we are going to use to follow along. This is an example company. It's a, a farm to home Inc. And that is where the company is farming vegetables and selling those directly to retail or directly to consumers to actually purchase, avoiding the retail, kind of a direct farm to home business. Lots of great businesses are in this kind of uh, effort today to help grow and meet demand. And so this is just an example we can use. Now also in our examples here, we have two years. We have year one and year two. That gives us an additional analysis that we can use as our example. All right, so here's our financials. We've got a profit and loss and a balance sheet. And now we want to talk about how can we analyze this business? Well, there's lots of different categories of analysis, and I want to break those down by category. And I want to do an example. So the first one I'm going to do is probably the one that most people start off with, and that is liquidity. Now, liquidity is the ability to, I'll kind of define these, ability to cover cash needs or short term, I'll abbreviate that needs. And so it's our ability to cover our cash needs. Now that's gonna be true of things like liabilities. So the debts that we owe short term, which is current, is comparing how, how able we are to cover those short term needs. And so really liquidity is just a definition of a current asset divided by current liabilities, and that is our formula for liquidity. So in our example here, we've got year one. I'm going to put this here at the top of my board here, and you do the same, and we're going to kind of run down these examples. So in the first example here, I've got the numbers pulled over right here, but we have got our current assets. If you look at the balance sheet here, at 219 820. So in year one, we just take 219, 820, and we divide that by our current liabilities, which, if I can look at this right, is um, 211, 290. Is that the right number? Yep. 211, 270. I probably should put my glasses on. That might help me look at my uh, stuff here. Oh, yeah, that does help quite a bit. 211, 270. So take 211, 270, and divide those two out. Let me punch that in on my calculator here. And as we punch all this stuff out, we're going to find out that that answer is a 1.04. Now, what that means is that means that your current assets and your current liabilities are dang near equal. Now, that is liquid. In fact, um, really, you'd like this to be greater than two as a goal. And so in this case, it's barely even, 1.04, almost the same. So that's not a good situation. We don't want to be in that situation. So let's see what happened as we move into year two. So in year two, we're going to have current assets of 263,584. 263,584. 
and we've got current liabilities this time of 191,270. So it's obvious to see that we've actually expanded our current assets. And when we do that ratio, the answer is 1.38. So we've improved, but have we met our 2.0 rating? The answer there is, um, is no, we haven't. And so that's kind of a problem for us in this particular analysis here. All right, so liquidity, and we were looking at this company, we might decide this company sure looks like they're in a spot that doesn't look like they have a lot of extra current assets. Now, another thing about liquidity, it's not just the current ratio. In fact, I should have written what this is. The current ratio is what that is called. Apologize for that. That's what that is, the current ratio. We have something called working capital is another way to look at this. And working capital, in fact, let me put in your notes, we'll put A and B, working capital. Working capital is really simple. It's current assets minus current liabilities. Uh, in other words, we're just looking at how much extra cash are we able to work with. When we talk about liquidity, it's remember, it's the ability to cover our cash needs, our short-term needs by covering those debts. And so what extra money do we have? We're simply just subtracting current assets minus current liabilities. And if we subtract those two in our first year, this is the dollar value, we get 8,000. Oops, kind of messed up there in my eight. If I can get that erased, that'll work. 8,550 in money. So again, not a lot of extra money in year two. That expands to looking at these values. Same thing we got up there, 72,314. So when you look at these whole numbers, $72,000, you're like, hey, that's a lot of extra cash. That means we're in good shape, right? Well, compared to liabilities, the current ratio still is a 1.38. So liquidity, that's one of the first areas to talk about in financial analysis. And it's really just talking about how can the business, how is the business in position to manage short-term cash needs? And that's done through liquidity. All right, second area, and I'm going to run out of room here for my goals. So we may have to move around the board. But next section is not looking at short-term anymore. It's looking at everything. And that is called solvency. And that's the ability to cover all, and that's really the difference here, cover all financial needs. So solvency is not worried about current anymore. Solvency is worried about long-term, big picture, everything. Now there's a couple of different ratios here and there's a lot of different calculations. Let's do A. And they're really the definition of these, the formula is based on how they're identified or named. So once again, we're taking our profit and loss and our balance sheet and we're comparing these. But in this particular case, just like the last one, we're only looking at the balance sheet right now. But remember, your income statement, net income flows to the balance sheet. So everything here at the top is part of the balance sheet. So well, again, looking at the balance sheet, we're looking at total now. And so the first one we're going to do is debt to asset, write that down with me, debt to asset. And really it's just total liabilities, that's the debt divided by total assets. So pretty easy formula right there. And if we take our total assets and what we're looking at here, and I'm gonna leave this stuff up on the board of course, but I'm not gonna keep writing these down. So we can just look at our total assets. Total assets in year one were $1,107,820 and that's the total assets. Our total liabilities, that's the total debt, is gonna be 431. 270. So if we divide that out, the answer is going to be in year one, a 0.38 for year one. So what that means is 38% of our assets have debt connected to them. Now that's not too bad. Uh, we would like to see less debt and more equity. And this is the first part of that. So debt to asset. 3.38. As we move across, and you don't really report this as a percentage, you report it as a decimal, a 0.38, but really that's a ratio of 38%. All right, the next one is as we move across, we see that our assets actually go up 1,131,000 and our 
total liabilities goes from 431 to 394. So you can probably say that, hey, this ought to improve. Our assets went up and our debt went down. And it does as we move across here. The answer is 0.34 or, of course, 34%. So those values are good. We want to see them going down over time, and that looks good. All right, what's well, another way to look at solvency? Well, remember, in your balance sheet, your assets equal your liabilities plus your equity. So this is half of the assets, or a portion. In this case, it's 0.38. There's another one that is the other side of this, equity to asset. Remember, assets equals liabilities plus equity. So there's your liabilities and there's your equity, comparing those assets. So as we move across here, it is going to be total equity divided by total assets. That's our formula across there, pretty easy. Again, equity to asset, total equity divided by assets, total assets, easy. All right, as we move across here, we're going to take a look at these, and we're looking once again, but this time we're talking about equity. <clears throat> equity is 676000 in year one. It moves to 737. Our assets have gone up as well, so we want to look at the ratio of this, and the ratio of this will be a 0.62 with some rounding, and the next ratio is going to be a 0.62. Six, six over here. So equity has gone up and it has to go up if debt has gone down. Because remember, these two things actually will add to one every time. So sometimes in lending, in borrowing, really a banker is interested in your debt to asset ratio to see how much debt you have. They actually don't even have to calculate equity to asset because it's the opposite to get to one every time. So debt to asset is probably the one that gets looked at the most, um, and then equity to asset is the counterpart to that. But this is looking good. Now, short-term debt looks like it's a problem, but overall debt seems to me to be going down, and it seems to be in proportion that equity is much higher than debt. So these ratios look good. What's another way we can look at this uh, financial solvency ratio is really now connecting debt and equity together, and that is called debt to equity. And so once again, it is total liabilities divided by total equity. And that is your formula, pretty simple. Now, as we move across here, we're gonna compare these. And so as we look at debt to equity, we could say that um, the formula would be pretty simple. Like I said, total liabilities. So coming over here and looking at your balance sheet again, total liability is 431,270. Equity is 67. 550, so that's what we have here. If we do a ratio of that, the answer is going to be for us, looking at the work I've already done here, is going to be a 0.64 in year one. And then in year two, we're taking uh, 191, uh, yeah, total liabilities, yeah, no, total liabilities, sorry. 394,270, and we're dividing that by our equity of 737. Now, it looks like to me that our liabilities went down, and it looks like to me our equity went up. We've seen some of this before, and so when we look at this ratio, the answer now is 0.53. And what you'd like to see, of course, is lower debt compared to equity. So as we look at the profit and loss, you can see in year one, we made $35,000. In year two, we made $44,745. So our profits are going up, which means our equity is going up, and it looks like we're not getting a lot more debt because the debt's dropping. So these ratios kind of illustrate that to us. But you can't just observe total liabilities. You can't just observe total assets. You can't even just observe total equity. You can't even really just look at profit in each year. By putting those values into these formulas, you actually can get a clearer picture of some of the financial areas, and we're talking about today. Liquidity means short-term debt, solvency, longer-term asset and debt, and then we put those ratios together and kind of get some pictures. Now, just to review a little bit, and then we're going to 
uh, stop and go to our next topic. But just to review, we're talking about liquidity, meaning ability to cover short term. Current ratio is one of the biggest ones. The goal would be greater than two. And it looks like to me that that is a problem because neither year is greater than two. In fact, in year one, we're just barely liquid. And in year two, we go a little further. So that's why I have the X there. As we move through with working capital, uh, working capital gives us the dollar value. But again, this is a little bit of a weak assessment, but it is used. Really, the current ratio is more important. So that's kind of the one that we would focus on. So if I were looking at financial analysis of this company, looks like they're making money, but it also looks like they're having a little bit of short-term debt problem and need to get that taken care of by either trying to refinance some of that debt, maybe try to uh, pay off some of that debt. If they've got some cash values, that's gonna balance out with them. So they need to really be concerned about the short-term borrowing that they have, the short-term debt. Now let's look at solvency when it comes to debt to asset ratio. So I can use uh, uh, these results here. It looks like our debt to asset was 0.38. It dropped to 0.34. These are good things overall. Equity to asset has gone up. That's also a good thing because we want more equity to grow. And then overall, we're looking at how much debt we have ratio to equity. And you can see that that's dropping as well. So it looks like in the short term cash needs, we see some issues. Looks like the long term cash ability looks like we're in good shape. So that may be one of the answers for the company is to try to refinance some of this short term, get it to be long term where we can get it shoved into this category and maybe better manage our business and improve our liquidity. All right, thanks a lot for watching this video on financial analysis. This is kind of a part one. There is a part two where we'll talk about profitability and efficiency. And so we'll step through that in just a second. Thanks.